Thanks, Stephanie. We do have our first coach on the line with us. It's Greg Lansing of Indiana State. The Sycamores opening up their week with a Wednesday game against Evansville in Terre Haute. Hey, good morning, Greg. Good morning, Mike. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, first look at Evansville. You play them twice in the last eight conference games. Uh, talk a little bit about the Purple Aces, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Well, you know, I, th- I think with record-wise and uh, with both of us, uh, obviously not where we want to be, but one thing that really impresses me is just how hard Marty still has them playing. Uh, they are really playing hard, uh, playing together, playing unselfishly, and, you know, got the makings of uh, um, putting the strain together wins just to, by the way they're playing and how hard they're playing, and, and that's something we have to get figured out ourselves. and an in-state rival against a program we have just tremendous uh, respect for um, and, and always how Marty coaches them up. So uh, we got to start, we gotta start uh, trying to get something going on our side. We just haven't done it. So it's, it's not going to be an easy one. I know, how, I know what we got coming in here and our players, uh, they, they, they better understand what's coming in here on Wednesday. Thank you, Coach. Let's get now to questions for Coach Greg Lansing, questions from the media. Please press star and the number one on your telephone keypad. Again, that star and the number one on your telephone keypad. Our first question is from Paul Sullentrop with the Wichita Eagle. Hey, Greg, I'm reading some questions from fans wondering about, you know, the women's game going to the four-quarter segment. Is that something the men's game might go to? Do you have a thought on how, that's, how that works out or if maybe that's something you'd like to see the men's game take a look at? Well, there's been a few this year. I wish we were done in 20 minutes. I know that. The way we've, been, we've performed is some of the time. But, yeah, I do, Paul. I really think that uh, the game ought to get more universal. Um do whatever the NBA is doing. Maybe maybe not play as long as the NBA games are, but uh, I think whether it's uh, in Europe or here or how, how they play in the Olympics, it just needs to become a more universal games. And going go to our women's game, went to went to it yesterday, and I like that. You know, it, uh, the coaches get some more uh, situational basketball uh, at the end of. Uh, quarters and start of quarters and you know finishing strong in quarters and starting good in quarters so yeah I, I, I'm all for uh, moving towards a more uh, universal game I guess the people that like it seem to think it maybe speeds up the game and cuts down on free throws is that what you've observed you know I haven't thought about it that way really I, I guess but I can I can see where that comes from uh, I know watching um, Evansville and Illinois State yesterday, there's you know there's a lot of whistles. You know teams are playing physical and still uh, trying to play the way they play, and and uh, it's tough for the officials with their with their uh, what they're looking at and what they're being asked to do and how they're being asked to call games. So that that might be a a, a good way to uh, change some of that. It, yeah, I, I don't like the game slow. I don't like so many fouls and so many free throws. So anything that would improve it along those lines, I'm all for it. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Your next question comes from Harry Schroeder with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, Greg, you talked about it being an in-state rivalry. Uh, how deep are, or, or are there certain teams that are greater rivals for you guys, and, and how important is it when it is an in-state rivalry game? Um, I think they're all rivalries. I really do. You know, in, in our league, geez, you see everybody twice, and it's, you know, we, we know all these guys, and we know how well coached they are, and uh, so every you know you you well, we we played uh, this weekend and then you look at the next one and you got Evansville then you look at the next one and it's like oh my gosh you just it it never stops it's just a gauntlet and I just know this I I you know playing I always say playing Evansville is like going to the dentist without getting any Novocaine because they they just play so hard they're tough uh, they give you nothing um, they're Marty always has them playing uh, well as a team, even though in the past they've had some, you know, the scores and how they focus on screening for those scores. But all those other guys really play their role, and they they play it well, and um, they just compete. They just compete and play hard, and that's about the biggest compliment I can give somebody. And they're right down the road. They're right down the road. You know, we we battle, um, you know, in-state uh, schools in, in recruiting, and, and they're no other. And uh, you know it's a, that's a that's a good place, just like this is a good place. So, yeah, we got a we got a rival on Wednesday, and I'm sure the next one will be a rivalry too. Uh, Brown's way up there in free throws attempted and made, and and then I look back over some of the history, and 
Colt Ryan was way up there and DJ was way up there. Is that part of the product of that motion offense that they're running? Yeah, it sure is. You know, when they got uh, a couple guys and, and, you know, there's four guys on the floor that that can be screening for them, and, and uh, there was nobody better than Colt Ryan and DJ Ballantyne um, than knowing how to play the game. Smart, you know, relentless and and drawing fouls, and just uh, I'm sure that's how Marty coaches them too. You know, they're they're one of the last, if not the last, that do, that do some tr- that do true motion uh, with all the screening and cutting, and and those guys were great, and and just very impressed with how uh, Jalen Brown has has come along as a scorer and doing those things. You know, when you, you know, when you play with and against in practice. Um, uh, DJ Ballantyne, obviously things are going to uh, rub off, but uh, he's done a great job. And just watching him, uh, the games that I ha- have had, it just like you, they just slip another guy right into that spot, and Taylor can score it too. So um, it, it, it always amazes me just, just how um, they continue to stick with that motion and, and how difficult they are to guard. Thanks a lot, Greg. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. That was your final question. I appreciate your time this morning, Greg. All right, Mike. Thanks. All right, bye. And just a follow-up note for Harry on his note about free throws made per game. Uh, Jalen Brown, 5.8 free throws per game. It's the fifth highest total in the last 20 years in league play, and four other Evansville players on that list, including Matt Webster, D.J. Ballantyne, and Colt Ryan. At this time, we'd like to welcome Coach Ben Jacobson of Northern Iowa to the, to the line. Uh, Northern Iowa playing at Illinois State. On Wednesday, game will be shown on, MB- on the NBC TV network, and then back at home on Saturday to play Indiana State. That game on the CBS Sports Network uh, nationally from Cedar Falls. This time, I'd like to welcome Coach Ben Jacobson to the line. Good morning, Coach. Hey, good morning, Mike. Uh, five wins in a row after going 0-5. Uh, historic uh, feat there. The last time that's happened was 1936 in, in our league, and the next test is Illinois State, and they're um, 11 11 straight wins, 17 straight at home. Talk a little bit about the Redbirds and what they do and problems they'll pose for you. Yeah, they're they're obviously on a on a really good run. They're as has been talked about a lot. Their defense is you know not just you know one of the one of the best or the best in our league, but in watching them play and looking at their numbers, guys, it's uh, it's one of the top defenses in the country. Uh, and anytime you've got a anytime you've got to put together your plan to to face that kind of that kind of group. I think individually they've got great defenders. You know, Paris obviously is one of the best that our league has seen. Um, and then as a team, what they do with their man-to-man and pressuring you and taking things away. And then also that zone has been really good for Dan and for their program, not just this year, but in years past. So you've got a lot to prepare for uh, because the, the schemes are good. But then, like I said, individually, and it's not just Paris, uh, you know, Tony is a terrific defender, and you could keep going with a number of their guys. Uh, you know, defensively, they're, they're one of the best in the country. Thanks, Ben. Let's get now to questions. <clears throat> ben Jacobson, questions from the media. Please press star the number one on your telephone keypad to ask your question. Star the number one. Your first question is from Harry Schroeder with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, Ben, we've made a lot about uh, Bennett's ability to score a lot, but I was looking over some things and noticing he's also, like, grabbing seven rebounds a night versus, like, two rebounds a night before your your five-game win streak. Um, and, and, and you've talked to us about how he's working on his game and all that, but is there anything more than that? I mean, it's amazing how different his game has been during your streak. Yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's really not, Terry. It's... Uh, you know, simply a, a combination of getting in and, and putting in the extra time and and then having some success. You know, that obviously has helped him. You know, being able to, uh, it was, I think it might have been five games ago, the first one of, of kind of getting us started where he had a big game against Drake. You know, that, you know, that gave him some confidence. Uh, but it starts with the hard work. You know, it starts with getting in the gym and getting up early when you don't have class, but getting up and going in anyway, spending time in the weight room, spending time with, with uh, with Kyle, uh, our assistant coach, Coach Green, and um, you know just getting the extra workouts in, uh, but that that has resulted in him you know playing better in that Drake game, and then that gave him you know the, a little bit of confidence. And I know I talked about that quite a bit prior to him playing well, uh, but I mean that's the you know is uh, I think as it is for a lot of guys, you know you you've got to get in and you've got to work, you've got to earn earn some confidence, and, and Bennett has done that. And I 
you know, in addition to the rebounds here, he's blocking some shots now too. You know, he's really moving around defensively and active to go and get rebounds. His offensive rebounds in the last couple games is, uh, I think, far greater than it was in the first, you know, 10 to 12 games. And then, like I said, he's going to block, <clears throat> going to block shots, and he, you know, that's something that he hadn't been doing. So his overall activity has been terrific. Uh, and, it's, uh, you know, I think his confidence is in, is in a good place right now. And, and then if I could follow up, uh, Ben, about your game this week, uh, you guys might be one of the teams that at least have enough bigger bodies that can maybe match up with their bigger athletic guys as well. Uh, just talk about the matchup about maybe who might be guarding who this week for you guys. It, it, yeah, and that's, you know, I talked about Illinois State's defense a lot, but then obviously you've got to go to the other end and you've got to find a way to defend them, and that's their versatility offensively uh, is uh, – is really really good, and you know when you go in through that lineup and with the size and the skill they have at the small forward, power forward, and center position, and the way they you know the way they can use those guys, and you know, and in some ways interchangeable, and they can go a little bit bigger, they can go a little bit smaller, but in either case, area they never they never really get a lot smaller, and uh, um, and that's going to be a challenge for us. You know our our bigger guys, you know Bennett. Ted, uh, Luke, uh, those guys having to possibly guard uh, somebody that can make a three-point shot and score it and drive it, uh, or you go the other way, and uh, and then a guy like Jeremy having to guard somebody. It doesn't happen very often to Jeremy, where he's got to guard somebody big, uh, and, and that's going to happen in this game on both sides of it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be tested, uh, you know, like everybody is right now with Illinois State. You know, their their lineup and the way they're playing is is really impressive. Thanks, Jake. Good luck. Yep. Thanks, Harry. Your next question is from Paul Southerntop with the Wichita Eagle. Hello, Ben. I've got some fans who are curious about the women's game going to four quarters. Uh, so I was going to ask some coaches today what their thoughts on maybe the men's game taking a look at that. Yeah, I, you know, with the changes that have happened in the last two years, Paul, I, I think that's one of the next ones that comes our way. And, and I think you know, if for no other reason, you know, the NBA is four quarters, uh, you know, the most most games uh, that are played at our at our level um, are four quarters, and uh, and we're you know we were stuck on that thirty five second shot clock, and we were the only the only game whether it be international um, or the NBA that was still stuck. And I, and I don't know if those games were ever at a thirty five second clock, but obviously they they haven't been for a long long time. So to make that move and at least get down to the thirty second clock, I thought was good. And I think four quarters is one of the you know one of the major things that that. Uh, that should be uh, coming next for us. I think I think our game should go to four quarters. Uh, and and again, I you know, I think there's a lot of reasons for it. Um, you know, you get the end of quarter situations, you get to reset the fouls, which is more important than the end of quarter situations. Um, but at the end of the day, that makes us more like you know the rest of the uh, the game as it's played internationally and um, and at the NBA level. Thank you. Jake, that was your last one. Appreciate your time this morning. Good luck this week. Okay. Thanks, Mike. All right. Bye-bye. And uh, for Harry Schrader, just a follow-up note on uh, Bennett Cook in, in wins, uh, 12.4 points per game, 8.2 in losses, 11 blocks in wins, and three in losses. And in, in the wins, 43 rebounds versus 22 rebounds in losses, and both of those are uh, 10 games up and 10 games down for Bennett when he plays. Uh, next up, we do have Coach Brian Worrell of Bradley. The Braves opening up their week with a game at Southern Illinois on Wednesday, back at home on Saturday to play Drake. At this time, I'd like to welcome Coach Brian Worrell to the phone. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well, thanks. Doing well. Certainly not the results you wanted uh, against Wichita State yesterday, but some positive signs uh, holding them to 64 points, including uh, a low number in the first half. Uh, talk about your effort yesterday, and then we'll, we'll look forward to the Southern Illinois game, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Well, I was proud of what we did in the first half. I think that's 20 minutes of pretty good basketball by us. We didn't turn the ball over. We, I thought I liked some looks we got, shots we got we didn't make. Um, I thought we were aggressive. We played tough. We played physical. We executed the game plan. It was one of our better halves of the year um, from the awareness uh, point of things, especially defensively. And then we just couldn't sustain it in the second half. We had too many, uh, you know, 
ball screen defensive breakdowns. We just lack of awareness at times, gave up threes. Um, and we just struggled to score the whole game. I mean, Wichita State does that to everybody. They're a very good defensive team, and they compete on that end for 40 minutes every night. And our team just has been a 20 to 25 minute team, um, which has been our struggle is to sustain and maintain the focus and the level of aggressiveness and physicality that we need to win. And we weren't able to do that. We played about 30 good minutes and then kind of broke down as the game went on. Thanks, thanks, Coach. Let's get now to questions for you. Questions for Coach Brian Mordo. Press stars in the number one to ask a question. Stars in the number one. Our first question is from Todd Heckerman with the Southern Newspaper. Hey, Brian, you, you talked about their uh, kind of sustaining that a little longer. Do you see the, the development there? Uh, and what, what else did you think you learned about your team from that Wichita game? Well, we're working on it hard every day in practice. I mean, we're trying to get them to sustain a level of focus and talk, uh, more importantly than anything, of a communication for all of practice from start to finish. And we're getting there. We just haven't been able to bring it over to game day performance yet. And pressure performance is really evaluate under pressure is always a big thing for me. And um, we've been struggling with that, unfortunately. I think when we are dialed in for a whole game and we're talking – and we're focused, um, we can play with everyone and, and win games. It's just a, because we're our young talent. I like our young talent and where we're going. It's just a matter of maturity and, and constantly talking and staying focused and, and um, battling through the adversity of a game is what we're struggling with. But we're working hard every day in practice. And practice, we're addressing it. We're talking about it. We're open about it. And I think that's the only way to move forward. But we definitely had a good 20 minutes, uh, 30 minutes of competitive ball that can help us win games in the down the stretch here if we can turn that into 40. Uh, Coach Barr had a nice game against SIU the first game. You know, what have you stressed in his development uh, with him? Well, we're just trying to get him to be a little more consistent. I think Koch is a great young man. He works very hard. Um, but, you know, I think the pounding of a season can wear on a freshman big man like that, especially when he doesn't have the body weight um, to sustain the level of physicality that we see night in and night out. But, uh, we just got to get him to, you know, be on point in, 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 on his ball screen defense and then just be real active around the rim, blocking shots, rebounding. And when his activity level is high, he produces. He puts up numbers, period, because he's a talented young man. Um, but we just got to get keep him fresh and keep him really active around the rim and get him to finish a little bit better around the rim, give us, you know, six, eight points um, would be very helpful. But he's working at it. We, we He's in every day trying to get better, and we just got to keep plugging along and, and get him improving so we can have a strong February. Thank you. Thanks. Coach, that was your only line of questioning this morning. Uh, appreciate your time, and good luck this week. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. We do have Coach Paul Lusk of Missouri State on the line with us. The Bears opening up their week with a home game against Loyola tomorrow night. Back on the road on Saturday to play Evansville. At this time, we'd like to welcome Coach Paul Lusk to the line. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Mike. A couple of one-point overtime losses, a very very tough week for the kids and for you. Uh, talk a little bit about what, what you tell them coming off of a week like that as you get ready for a very difficult Loyola ball club tomorrow night. Well, I, I think we did some good things. We just didn't finish. You know, against Drake, I was very pleased with how we guarded them. Um, we really got down and guarded. Um, they just they beat us. And the other night at Southern, uh, we gave up that lead. But when a team shoots 60% the second half, you're not going to win many games. And our defense kind of failed us the other night. We shot 60% versus Southern in the first half, which you can win a lot of games doing that. And then it kind of flipped the second half. And um, I just thought we simply didn't get down and guard, and uh, that cost us. Thank you, Paul. Let's get out to questions for you. Questions from the media for Coach Paul Lusk of Missouri State. Press stars in the number one to ask your question. Stars in the number one. Our first question is from Harry Schrader with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, good morning, Paul. I just I wanted to ask you a couple quick things. One is uh, the two guys that have been the most dominant in the weekly awards of the newcomer thing have been your guy, Alizé Johnson, and then their guy, 
uh, Andre Jackson. Can you compare their two games? I know they're both kind of bigger guys, but can do a lot of things. And then the other question is, um, when you look at Milton Doyle and and the diver- the versatility of his game, he's he's uh, a lot to handle. Just talk a little bit about him. Yeah, yeah. Well, first about Jackson. You know, he's uh, he's an undersized post, but he'll occasionally step out and make a shot. But he is. I think the one thing on the on the low post and the mid post is he's very quick around the basket. He's very powerful. Um, he keeps it pretty simple around the basket. He goes through your chin, and uh, he's very very efficient. Obviously, by his field goal percentage, uh, he's terrific. He outquicks a lot of people. He's tough. He gets he gets rebounds. Um, he can finish down there. So he's been very impressive. I think Milton Doyle is as tough of a matchup as there is in the league. I I don't know that there's a better passer in our league. Um, I don't know that there's a better decision maker off ball screens. Uh, He's got to be awfully fun to play with because um, he creates a lot of offense um, with his ability and his his vision to see the floor. And, uh, you know, he's playing at a very, very high level. He is a, He's a six-five point guard um, that can impact the game by scoring it, but also uh, by making others better. I, I know in the off season he put on maybe fifteen twenty pounds of muscle. Do you notice a difference in his game in terms of like toughness in the lane? No, I really haven't noticed that. I just think he's playing very good basketball. Um, he just he's when you're that big and you can. You can come off ball screens or you've got the ball in your hands and you can pass the way that he can pass and the vision that he has, uh, it's a difficult matchup. Now, obviously, any time you get stronger, uh, that's certainly going to help you in the game of basketball. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Paul. Good luck. You bet, Harry. Coach, there are no more questions in the queue for you. Appreciate your time this morning and good luck this week. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Missouri State's four overtime games this year is one shy of their record for a, a single season set twice last in 2012 when they had five overtime games. Missouri State, one of four or one of three teams this year in the league with four or more overtime contests. Indiana State with a school record five. Missouri State at four and Southern Illinois also at four. We are currently holding for Coach Barry Henson. We'll have him on momentarily. While we're waiting for the coach, just a couple of uh, conference notes to share with you. Uh, as mentioned before, Northern Iowa's 0-5 start, followed by five straight wins. This is the third time that's happened in league history. Uh, the last uh, coming from Washburn in 1936, the Ichabod started 0-5, won their next five, lost at Drake in game 11, and the other was Iowa State back in 1915. 0-5 start, 5-5 five and five finish. The Cyclones played just 10 games in league play that year. And we do have Coach Barry Hinson on the line with us. The Salukis opening up their week with a home game against Bradley on Wednesday. At this time, we'd like to welcome Coach Hinson to the line. Morning, Barry. Good morning, Michael. Quite a, quite a second half against the Bears the other day, and uh, congratulations on that win at home in overtime. And uh, next up is Bradley. Bradley um, got you early on in the season, the conference opener for both of you. Talk a little bit about the rematch with the Braves, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Well, I, I think it's obviously that um, – they, you know, Brian has them playing really good right now. It's a two-point game in the second half with Wichita State, and we never had it a two-point game at Wichita State. And 
unless it was two to nothing. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, we know they're playing better and, uh, and they beat us solid at their place. And, uh, you know, we, we, um, uh, we certainly are looking forward to the game, but we know we'll have to play extremely well in order to win it. Thank you, Coach. Let's get now to questions for Coach Barry Henson. Questions from the media. Press start in the number one to ask your question. The first question is from Dave Reynolds with the Peoria Journal Star. Morning, Barry. Morning, Dave. Um, do you feel like your team kind of righted the shift after the Wichita State game? Well, Dave, I don't know. It's a lot. A lot of times, it's uh, we obviously didn't in the first half uh, against Missouri State because we were uh, we were awful. I mean, we were just we had no energy, we had no enthusiasm. We just looked like we were running around in concrete. But my staff convinced me at halftime it was a confidence based issue and not not an effort issue because we were we were down. We'd had we'd really had a tough thirteen days, and it was hard for us to adjust to that. And, and then at the second half, you know, the kids. You know, obviously they played a lot better, but I think you have to give a lot of credit to Paul and, the, and the, his kids. They really played hard, and and uh, they came up with their backs up against the wall, which we knew that's exactly how they would respond. And, and they really played well. And I and I I'll say this again: I think they're really good. I think Missouri State's a good basketball team, so I think it's a heck of a win for us. But it's easy to write the ship a lot of times when you're at home. So uh, uh, it, it'll see. This will be a game where we know they're going to zone us. We know they're going to make us shoot perimeter jump shots. And that has been our Achilles heel for quite some time. And um, so I don't think I can answer that question and probably until after Loyola when we go on the road to see how we respond at home and a road game. It, it's been a long time since you played, Bradley. That was a, a season opener for you guys. Um, what what can you take from that game, and, and what do you see different in the Braves now? Well, I think – you can see maturity for one thing. Uh, and, it, and then the other thing for us is the one thing that we're going to take away from that game, we know they're, they're going to play exactly how they played us, and why would they not? And, uh, you know, Bradley was really uh, kind of a map for a lot of people in our league to play us. We have teams that have rarely played zone, that have played zone against us because of the Bradley game. And so the thing that I take away from is what I said earlier. We, we know what's getting ready to happen. Uh, we kind of almost have the answers to the test uh, before we take it, but we still have to. We still have to. We just got to figure out how to do it, and uh, uh, we know what's getting ready to happen. So we've got to make we've got to make perimeter jump shots. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Your next question is from Harry Schrader with about Hoops Insider. Hey, Barry, uh, talking to uh, Jake about Doyle and all the different things he does so well. Um, I've just been so blown away by the way O'Brien's game continues to uh, expand and all the different things he does for you. Can you just talk about his versatility and then also how's his back? He looked a little gimpy at the end of that game. Well, he's gimpy every game, Harry. He's, you know, he's, I'm, I'm telling you, he's got a body like mine. I, I, seriously, I'm not, not, not in looks, but in, in, in age and pain. But, uh, uh, you know, he's been banged up, and he's, there's nothing we can do about it. We, we don't have... Uh, we don't have anything we can help him with, but uh, you know we try to limit him in practice. Uh, he has one one rotation, whereas the other player has three normally, and we do a one and three rotation on him, and we try to sit him as much as we can. But uh, you know, with that being said, and how he's played, uh, I, I think has just given everybody a, a glimpse of how tough this kid really is. And he is versatile. He's like having a point guard uh, in the middle of the paint, and uh, when he just when he is confident in himself and when he leads this basketball team, we're pretty good. And uh, what he did the other night was was pretty spectacular. And uh, forget the points; uh, it's not the points. It's how he guards. It's how he rebounds. It's how he passes the basketball. And the intangibles that you don't see behind the scenes, in the huddles, on the floor, in the locker room. In the timeouts, I, I think those are the most valuable things that he does for this basketball team. But then again, Harry, he's a senior, and that's what seniors are supposed to do. Well, it was clear in that game that he was just deciding that he was taking the team, taking the leadership in that game. No, there's, I don't think there's any question. And, uh, and you probably recognize that we had decided that was what was going to happen to him because we <laughs> made sure that the ball was in his hands as much as possible. Thanks, Barry. Appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great day. 
Coach, that's all for you. Thanks for joining us this morning, and good, good luck against Bradley Wednesday night. Oh, okay, Michael. Have a great day. Thanks, Coach. We do have Evansville Coach Marty Simmons with us, and Evansville playing at Indiana State on Wednesday, and then the Purple Aces uh, hosting Missouri State on Saturday. Good morning, Marty. Good morning, Mike. First matchup against Indiana State of the year. You get them twice in the final eight games in league play. Talk a little bit about the Sycamores. I know both teams are not pleased with their 1-9 start in conference action, but Indiana State's a very good ball club. They beat Butler, a nationally ranked team, early in the year. But let's uh, preview the Sycamores, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Yeah, it's uh, always a tough matchup for us when we play Indiana State. I think Greg and his staff – do as good a job as anybody. I mean, they make it very difficult for us to 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 get good looks offensively, and uh, their team is as prepared as as anybody when we play them. Uh, got a great score in, in Scott. Uh, they've got some experience, tough guys, and in, in Van Soik and and Clemens. Uh, they got TJ TJ Bell back. He's playing well. Uh, the freshman Barnes, very very impressed with him. Uh, as I said earlier, it's just always a, a very, very difficult matchup. Thanks, Marty. Let's now get to questions for you, questions from the media for Coach Marty Simmons. Press start in the number one to ask your question. Start in the number one. Marty, with Jalen Brown leading the league in scoring, obviously a lot of focused on him from your opponents, but you've got some other guys that are stepping up recently. Dwayne Gibson with 21 the other day, and David Howard last couple of games in double figures. Talk about the contributions you're getting from players not named Jalen Brown. Yeah, I mean, Jalen's done an outstanding job. Ryan Taylor's been another guy that has really done a good job for us as well, Mike. And as you said, David's really picked up the last couple games. I think his confidence is is really high. Uh, that's That's kind of you know, that's what we're looking for. That's what we need going forward is finding, you know, a third and fourth and maybe even a fifth score that, that can really help us uh, on the offensive end. We've had different guys at different times uh, do it, but but unfortunately we just haven't we just haven't played with the consistency that we need to. Thanks, Marty. And there are no questions in the queue. The only question for me this week, so you're lucky. Uh, <laughs> we'll let you go and have a good week this week. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Marty. And we're a couple of minutes ahead of schedule. Uh, uh, coach Porter Moser of Loyola will be our next scheduled coach at 1051. So we'll hope for just a, just a minute we'll get Coach Moser on the line with us. A couple of notes for uh, Loyola. The uh, Ramblers ranked number six nationally in field goal shooting. shooting. Um, and Andre Jackson, number four nationally in individual field goal shooting. He's at 70.7% from the field. That would be a league record if you extrapolate that over the course of the season. The previous and current league record is Vernon Moore of Creighton, 67.4% field goal accuracy back in 1985. And we do have Coach Porter Moser on the line with us. Loyola will open its week with a game at Missouri State tomorrow night. Good morning, Coach. Morning, Mike. Oh, let's talk about Missouri State, preview the game for us, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Um, I mean, they obviously they have the, one of the elite players in our league and one of the most exciting guys to watch. I mean, I, I, I tell you, watching all this tape, I mean, he, on different teams, game in and game out, he's, he's one of the more exciting players to watch in our league. Uh, in, in terms of Lee Johnson, um, just so versatile, athletic, inside, outside, defensive. I mean, he's he's really good, and I think Miller is is one of our elite point guards in our league. And um, so I know um, I know there's a big uh, clog, <laughs> there's a big jam between two and ten, you know, in there. A lot, a lot of things can happen. So I know every one of these games are big. Thanks, Coach. Let's get now to questions for you. Questions from the media for Coach Porter Moser. Press star in the number one to ask a question. Star in the number one. 
Your first question is from Paul Sullentrop with the Wichita Eagle. Morning, Porter. I've had some fans who are curious about the, you know, the women's game going to four quarters and if that's something the men's game should look at. Do you have a thought on, on that? You know, I, I, I kind of like it. I was, I was, um, I was actually watching uh, uh, some of the Wichita Loyola game yesterday, and I, I was thinking about the same thing. And um, I kind of like that about the fouls resetting. You know, I, I think that that's the one area where I like it. Um, you know, I think you can get into um, – the other day I think we got into bonus with 12, 13 minutes left to go in the half, and that can just really affect how you go the rest of the half. Um, so I like the foul resetting uh, in terms of the bonus. Thank you. Your next question is from Harry Schrader with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, Porter, you were talking about Alizé Johnson and the diversity in his game. Can you expand on that a little bit and then talk about uh, – I, I think Milt goes a little unnoticed by people because he's not scoring 20 every night, but he's so diverse in what he does for you that he's actually more valuable than that guy that scores 20 every night. Sure, Harry. Uh, in terms of the first one with uh, Johnson, um, elaborating on his diversity with, as a player, you know, he's, a, he's an elite rebounder. He's got an amazing sense of where the ball's coming off the rim for, to get offensive rebounds. I mean, he, he also um, he goes. You know, I remember Moses Malone talking about, hey, if I go 10 times and I get one and if there's 70 shots, I'm getting, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that goes every single time. And he, you, you'll see him crash out to in as well. He's playing on the perimeter a lot, and you get this 6'8", long, quick guy crashing out to in. It's very, very tough. And then you, you combine that with his sense of, of where the ball's coming off. Then he's a guy who can get a defensive rebound and bring it up himself. You know, he... He'll bring up the, the transition offense, and that's something different. Um, he's shown he, you can, it, it can high pick and pop him for a three. Um, he goes on the block, and he posts up. He gets a lot, he, he's got a lot of stuff on, the, on that block posted up. Um, just a, just is very electrifying. I mean, long, bouncy athlete that can go inside and out. Um, as far as Milt's concerned, Harry, I, I, I agree. I mean, it, it's, it's something that, um, he didn't have a great year last year. We sat down. We were very honest with him. And to Milt's credit, some kids don't want to hear that. And he, he was unbelievable when we sat him down after the season and had his best off season. And he's, he's what we say is playing the right way. You know, sometimes he tried to do everything himself, not because he was selfish, because he wants to win so bad. He just kind of, I got to do it all myself. I think he has a, a tremendous trust in his teammates right now. Um, he has a, a lot of trust in the different guys on the team, the different pieces we have. Um, he's letting his vision come into the game. He's a, he's a really good passer. Um, he really, he, he's tall, coming off the pick and rolls. that You can see things. Um, and uh, I, I do. I think he's having a really good year. I mean, he's shooting the ball well. He's passing it. He's, his assist to turnover ratio is good. Um, he's got a high rebound clip. I mean, he's been absolutely huge for us this year. You know, you're in Chicago. He's kind of Scotty Pippen to me. <laughs> well, I, I, I love that. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, everything's relative. I, I, he, he does a lot like that, like that long defender. Um, you know, sh he's been shooting it. Um, you know, he is. He's very long like that for our league and, uh, as a guard. And uh, I tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased. I'm happy for him, too. You know, he graduated this Christmas. He's got his degree. Um, he's playing out this year, and he just uh, – I, I, he, he really wants it. I mean, he really – and he's proven it every day in practice. He literally is probably our most vocal and hardworking guy in practice every day, and that hasn't been the case. Appreciate it, Porter. Thank you. Thanks, Harry. Porter, that was your final question. Thank you for your time this morning. Good luck this week. Thanks, Mike. All right. Bye-bye. Next coach to join us will be Jeff Rutter of Drake. The Bulldogs opening up their week with a home game against Wichita State on Wednesday, and we'll hope for just a moment until we can get Coach Rutter on the line. Last week, Drake uh, did win at Missouri State 72-71 to in overtime. It was the first 
road win for Drake in nearly two two years, and its first win in Springfield in 16 seasons back in 2001. Um, Drake has only won twice on Missouri State's home court. And we do have Drake head coach Jeff Rutter with us. The Bulldogs opening with Wichita State on Wednesday on the road Saturday to play Bradley in Peoria. At this time, we'd like to welcome Coach to the line. Morning, Jeff. Hey, is this Mike? It is. How are you? Good, Mike. And yourself? I'm, I'm well, thank you. Uh, great win at, at Springfield the other day. Uh, certainly a long time coming in Springfield, and that's nice one to get of a very good Missouri State ball club on, Tuesday, on, on Wednesday. Yeah, very happy. Uh, for our guys, uh, it, uh, we were able to find a way to get rewarded on that thing. We, we fought hard. I'll tell you, it was a game where uh, <clears throat> I mean, Paul's done uh, such a such a great job all season long. Very talented club. Uh, Executes so well. Defend you so well. We only had two offensive runs that entire game, and uh, now we each had. Uh, we had a, we had seven gaps defensively or offensively their defense, but yet we we held them seven times to three or more possessions without scoring. So it was just a it was just a, a classic battle. Um, of course, they had a lead uh, in the first half. I don't know, fourteen or so, a nine point lead in the second half, and we just kind of found a way to hang in there. And, and fortunately, you know, made some uh, made some plays uh, late. But uh, I think it was uh, really a credit to our defense. To just be able to hang in there against uh, against a really talented team, uh, happy and proud for our guys. Thanks, coaches. Let's get now to the questions for you. Questions for Coach Jeff Rutter from the media. Please press star and the number one to ask your question. Star and the number one. Mm-hmm. Our first question is from Paul Sullentrop with the Wichita Eagle. Morning, Jeff. Uh, I guess you know for coaches, it's always that mystery about why why teams will play so well at home and then struggle on the road. Drake is the offensive numbers at home are really really good. What's your view about the I guess the comfort level or why why the Bulldogs shoot the ball so well in that in the nap center? Yeah. Good morning, Paul. Well, I wish we would have shot it a little better this past Saturday, <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, but this year that there, there has been a tendency of, of shooting it better at home, and uh, you know having some uh, having some offensive struggles on the road. It's a good question. Um, you know we uh, I think at times have a tendency to uh, allow our identity to be whether we're making or missing shots, and. Um, I know that was a 
uh, uh, was a case down at Wichita the, in game number one. Um, you know, we thought we had some decent looks. Uh, but, again, I mean, certainly credit to their defense. But uh, things really got away from us in the first half at Wichita, and now all of a sudden defensively we are not playing as well. You know, I think back to two weekends ago at Illinois State, we had a stretch of 13 possessions without – without scoring the ball in the first half, but yet we finished the half strong. We only went down, I think, four and uh, really played a good 10, 12 minutes in the second half, but without about eight to go, we just kind of lost our minds again. Uh, a little bit offensively, but more defensively. And at Missouri State, it seemed like the whole night defensively we were locked in and we were not going to allow, you know, making missing shots be a distraction to us. Um, but to answer your question, Paul, Sorry to get off on a tangent. Um, you know, just uh, <clears throat> being in a different building, um, but I think more than anything, it's it's uh, we let some of those struggles maybe get to us a little bit. We maybe lose some focus. Maybe the execution's not as crisp. Um, but just need to stay confident, keep running our offense, keep sharing the ball, and maybe, uh, you know, we're doing a little better job of, of letting our defense spark our offense, um, but to really hang our hat on the defensive end. Hope I answered your question. Yeah, I think Wichita, <laughs> which, yeah, Wichita State players have gone through something similar at times. They're so good on offense a lot of times. They maybe don't you know, rely on their defense as much as that. Just you know, When you have a good bunch of shooters, you have to constantly remind them to you know, keep working on both ends. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> all I know about Wichita is that they're uh, they're an excellent defensive team, uh, and it seems like for 40 minutes, you know, they're bringing that. So, um, but uh, no, I think it's a tendency with players that uh, you know, just in general, at times uh, they let their uh, let their uh, maybe offense dictate uh, their their whole game, you know, and in particular on the defensive end or the hustle board, those kinds of things. So, we've tried to. Uh, spend a fair amount of time talking with our guys and emphasizing that, uh, that we just we can't allow that to happen. They need to stay strong, stay focused, uh, and they need to pick one another up there on the floor and encourage one another and uh, have direct conversation about coverages and different things to just stay locked in. We talk an awful lot about, about runs and gaps. And, um, you know, we had a stretch the other day. You know, the lead went back and forth, uh, you know, five, six minutes into the second half against Northern Iowa. And then we went uh, we went about eight without scoring, six of them. First six were all good looks, you know. But during that stretch, we did a, did a good job of continuing to get stops. Now, they did hit two buckets that opened up a, a seven-point lead, and, uh, and that was really the difference in the game. But, uh, you know, those runs and gaps are so key, and even when you're not uh, knocking down shots, you got to, continue to hang your hat on that defensive end and that, that energy and that hustle board. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Your next question is from Harry Schrader with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, Jeff, when you look at uh, Wichita State, I, you know, they're so difficult to defend or to play offense against, but is there one particular guy that is a maybe a matchup problem for your team? Yeah. Uh, thanks for the question, Harry. I'd say they've got about 12 or 13 matchup <laughs> problems. But, but uh, you know, I guess to answer your question, you know, a guy like a guy like Marcus McDuffie comes to mind because he, uh, you know, possesses everything. He's got that, that length and strength and athletic ability and that complete skill set. And, uh, and Greg, you know, moves him around. Uh, whether he's on the block post in or he's out in the perimeter, whether he's a screener, whether he's a cutter, uh, does a great job running the floor. He's a he's a tough guard and a tough matchup. Uh, and again, I think so much because of his uh, complete skill set, along with along with his body and athleticism. Thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Harry. Jeff, that was your final question. Thanks for your time today, and, and good luck against Wichita State Wednesday. Very good. Thank you, Mike. Have a great day. Yeah, thanks, Coach. We do have Coach Dan Muller on the line with us. Illinois State facing Northern Iowa on Wednesday in Normal, Illinois. The Panthers having won five straight games after 
having lost five in league play in Illinois State's winning streak, now at 11-17 at home. And this time we'd like to welcome Coach Dan Muller to the line. Good morning, Coach. Morning, Mike. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. Good. Talk, talk about Northern Iowa for us, if you will, and then preview uh, Wednesday's matchup with the Panthers. Well, they're playing extremely well. Obviously, we probably all expected them to go on a run at some point, knowing how well they're coached and just their winning pedigree. Uh, they're really guarding. If you look at their numbers, obviously they're shooting the ball better. Their percentages on both ends of the court are much improved, and, and Cook is playing at a high level. So it should be a heck of a game. Thanks, Dan. Let's get now to the questions for you. Questions for Coach Dan Miller of Illinois State. Chris Stard, the number one, to ask your question. Our first question is from Clay Cunningham with the Waterloo Center, Cedar Falls Courier. Hey, Coach. Um, I was just um, trying to check in on um, what is uh, Mikhail McIntosh's uh, status for Wednesday, and when was the decision made to sit him yesterday? Hey, Clay. The decision was actually made right before the game. He, I mean, he went through warm-ups, and we wanted to see how he felt. Um, we're doing an MRI today just to make sure, but everything seems stable. We heard it a week ago and, and had been practicing and obviously played last Wednesday. So I'm not really sure yet. We'll have to wait and see what it looks like and how he feels. Maybe a game-time decision. We may know before then. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Our next question is from Harry Schrader with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, Dan, uh, obviously Northern's, you know, gone crazy the last uh, two and a half weeks or so. What, what do you see that they're doing maybe differently, number one? And then number two, can you just talk about uh, the difficulty in trying to corral Morgan with all of his versatility? Hey, Harry, yeah, you know, not sure if, they went, if they're going crazy now or they were going crazy the first five games. Um you know, Morgan is clearly the – I wouldn't say he's the emphasis of their offense, to be honest, because they're getting the ball inside so much right now. Obviously, Carlson's been shooting better the last three games, but uh, Morgan's got the green light. He, he, he handles the ball a lot more than, he's ever had, than he ever has. Uh, he posts up. Um, he can drive both ways. He's, he's making a bunch of mid-range shots, and obviously he competes at a high level. He's great on the defensive end. So we all know he can go off for 30. But, again, they're getting that ball inside a lot lately. Um, I think that's a big – I haven't watched a lot of their games before they start winning. But I'm guessing that's a big difference in, in their success, and Cook is really efficient right now. Thanks, Dan. Good luck. Thank you. Dan, that was your final question. Uh, good luck against Northern Iowa on Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Coach. We have Coach Greg Marshall on the line with us. The Shockers opening up their week with a game at Drake on Wednesday, returning home to play Illinois State on Saturday. Um, at this time, we'd like to welcome Coach Greg Marshall to the phone. Morning, Greg. Hello. Hi, how are you? All right. Uh, Drake, played him earlier, and it's been, a, it's been a, about a month since you played him, but uh, your thoughts on, on the Bulldogs and how they play at home in particular, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Well, they're obviously playing uh, very well. I think I've read something last week. They've won like five in a row at home. So um, they're doing some good things. Uh, looking forward to getting into them today. Uh, having played yesterday, we're still trying to put the Bradley tape to bed. and uh, But we'll get into them in about an hour. Thanks, Coach. Let's get now to questions for you from the media. Questions for Coach Greg Marshall of Wichita State. Press stars in the number one to ask a question. Stars in the number one. Our first question is from Harry Schrader with the Valley Hoops Insider. Hey, good morning, Greg. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about Marcus and, and the way his season has gone along and, and just how diverse his game is, how he can – help you in so many different ways. Yeah, Harry, he can you can score the ball. Uh, he's shooting at a very good percentage uh, overall from three free throws. 
at six foot eight. He can score around the basket. He can shoot it from deep. He can. He's got a mid range. He can drive it. Uh, pretty good rebounder. Uh, usually on the offensive end, but last night he was a very good defensive rebound. I think he had 14 rebounds last night. Um, and a good defender. He's, his, his length is a, is, a, is a plus for us. We can put him on good players and smaller guys, and his length is really, um, and the way he moves his feet, it causes people problems with being 6'8". And, and do you see him really growing into all that you expect of him? Meaning, like, I, you know, we see him play terrific all the time, but it seems like his game just continues to become more efficient. Would that be a, a good observation? Well, that's what we're trying to get him to be is more efficient. You know, don't take bad shots. Don't turn the basketball over. Make the simple plays. Have the game slow down for you. And uh, that's what we're working on with him all the time. Just have the game slow down. Thanks a lot, Greg. Good luck. Okay, bud. Greg, I have one, one follow-up question based on another of your younger players. Talk about Landry Shamit's development this year. He is, uh, in particular, second half yesterday, kind of took the leadership role for you and kind of willed your team to win at Bradley. Uh, he's, he's, he's been really good for us since the day he stepped on campus. You know, it was a big blow to us last year when he went down after three games. He had actually started the third game after with Fred Van Bleet's injury. Um, he does it all. He can take care of the basketball. He's got a great assist to turnover. He shoots it at a high percentage. Uh, he can get to the rim. He got a pull-up game. He's a nice defender. He understands our system very well. He's played off the ball. He's now playing more on the ball as a point guard, and he's also played some small forward because he's at least six four and pretty athletic. So. We're excited that he's a you know a freshman in our program, and hope we will continue to evolve. Great, right, thanks very much. That was your final question, and good luck in Des Moines on Wednesday, and we'll talk to you later. Okay, guys, thanks. Thanks, Greg. This does wrap up our weekly call. Uh, we'll ask the beat writers to stay on the line, please, for a quick roundtable, and the others can please disconnect at this time. Every road to St. Louis starts on the Missouri Valley Conference campus and converges under the gleaming reflection of Park Magnus. Don't miss the 2017 State Farm NBC Men's Basketball Championship March 2nd through 5th at Scott Trade Center, presented by Aetna and Fox Sports Midwest. Get your tickets and get on the road to Arch Madness as 10 Missouri Valley teams battle it out for a final march to Selection Sunday. Get your tickets and get to St. Louis for Arch Madness. Ready to discover the newest marvel on the Mississippi? Hoops in the Heartland is returning to the Quad Cities. Don't miss the 2017 Missouri Valley Conference Women's Basketball Championship at the iWireless Center in Moline, presented by Aetna. Get your tickets and experience Hoops in the Heartland as 10 Missouri Valley teams battle it out for a final March to Selection Sunday. Get your tickets and get to the Quad Cities for Hoops in the Heartland. 